So yeah, basically today is, um, basically what we'll be doing is just to network, get to know each other better, get to know um, if we'll be having any challenges or what challenges we'll be having as um, DSA student members, especially now that we're having this whole COVID-19 issue. So the whole point of the event is just to gather ideas and suggestions on how um, DSA can um, support its student members better and how we as student members can also engage with ourselves better and also introduce some of the opportunities that we might have for DSA student members. So um, I will um, invite Amal to briefly just introduce herself. She's also a representative. I'm sure you've been seeing our names on most of the emails. And then um, Laura will talk to us briefly if she's ready and um, we'll open up the floor for people to just um, just talk about their experiences, really. We want to know what challenges you're having um, as GSA student members conducting your research amidst COVID-19 and just generally what's problems or challenges or things you would like to see, you know, um, happen as um, during your time as a student, um, DSA student member, if you have ideas on how um, we can conduct some activities that could be student-led, student-focused um, activities that will generally help you um, kind of enjoy your research better during the time you're in university. So um, Amal, can you just introduce yourself? And Hello, everyone. Thank you for all for coming. My name is Amal. I'm also uh, uh, doing my PhD at uh, York St. John University, and I'm also a representative on the council. So I'll be also um, happy that we're all here. And uh, if you have any question, I'm, I'm ready. But Buki is leading this meeting, and I'm here to support if you need anything. Okay. So um, we are about 15 people here now. I think, um, should we um, just go around, since we're not that many, just briefly, if anyone, because there's, um, there's a raise your hand function here. So if anyone has anything they would like to start by saying, just, um, just introduce yourself, what university, um, you're studying at and what you think or what you have experienced as um, challenges in um, conducting your research or going through doing your academic work um, during this time and just generally what kind of challenges do you face what would you like to um, see more of what would you like in terms of support um, from DSA what would you like for us to take forward to the council so if you can just use the raise your hand function on the bar, just beneath your screen, and then we can bring you up and you can tell us what you have in mind. Um, so I just had a yeah. two, two thoughts that may be useful in terms of discussion with the students. One is may, I'm sure some people must be having uh, uh, stresses over challenges of field work in the time of coronavirus. Um, I'm sure some people's is not back, other people's maybe halfway through, or they're trying to rethink um how, how they might do it either remotely or uh, uh, at distance or something like that. um so that was one particular area i don't know if there's uh, interest in, in in the room um i think the other one was more on this court of um uh, engagement uh this seems a really inter interesting platform on this shindig uh, i think uh, it, yeah we have the conference every year but i think not everyone can always get to it uh, and particularly obviously people more people from the global south getting involved and compatriots um uh, being part of it so i think more of uh, these sorts of engagements i think is something that we could maybe talk about uh, and, and give suggestions of how how the students might engage so um please Welcome. if anyone has had any um experience or has had to do their field work differently or has any ideas um on how we as students can do our, our field work differently in in light of COVID-19, it would be good to share with other people. I personally, I'm done with my field work, so I've not had that kind of issue, but I'm aware that there's some people who have to do kind of face-to-face -face kind of interaction, and they may have had to um, kind of innovate around things like that. So if you have any ideas to share, um, Gareth would be very happy to 
here and I'm sure others can benefit from it as well. Issues. So his question is, um, I'm Chika Mba from Nigeria. I'm a PhD student, um, University of Nigeria. My field of research is peace building and conflict resolution. I would like to know possible collaborations. So um, Chika is interested in um, collaborating with anyone within the DSA, maybe student members. We can also um, find a way to get this more, uh, spread more widely. Anyone interested in peace building and conflict resolution? Um, I personally can suggest that you can check the um, DSC website. Um, we have reading groups where, um, I think they are grouped thematically. So you might be able to find a reading group where um, there are a couple of people, both lecturers, students working on kind of related subjects, even if it's not directly um, related to your research, but maybe something similar. Um, so, but if anyone has any suggestion and or anyone knows or anyone is doing anything relating to peace building and conflict resolution, Chika Mba from Nigeria is interested in partnerships. And just to say that we have our DSA student email and um, I'm sure you've seen some emails from Amal and I. So just in case, um, you're looking for how to connect with people after now or trying to get message broadcast uh, more widely. You can always get to us and we should be able to do it for you. Um, so we don't have any raised hand right now. So I'm just going to bring Laura up and she'll be just talking to us for a few minutes. Hello. Hi, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, <Ricky. laughs> uh, I'm one of the people responsible for students on campus. I'm not currently a student. It's actually it's a while since I've been a student, but I have to say that experience of doing a PhD really, really stays with you. Uh, so I work with Buki and Amal um, in administering some of the things that we do for students, the most interesting of which is probably the Early Career Research Networking Fund. So that was started um, last year. It's now in its, its fourth round. Um, the next call is just about to go out and the closing date will be, um, and there'll be a closing date in September. Uh, but it's an opportunity if you, if you want to put on an event with um, other early career researchers, uh, for example, some training around academic writing or a photography exhibition, then you can apply for funding um, up to £7,000. Uh, so far, we've not had many applicants and therefore it's a really good um, source of funding to try. What we're quite interested in, of course, is if you can co-fund with your institution or possibly for people people in the UK with your doctoral training partnership, because that means that the money can go further and we can really en enhance its reach. Um, in terms of other things that we do for students, uh, obviously the conference and um, these meetings provide um, an important opportunity to connect. And I think Bookie will talk a little bit about the governance structure that we have with student representatives in different universities. Uh, for master's students, every year we run the dissertation prize, which is very popular, some really excellent submissions. Um, that uh, generally happens, so it's usual that a department will submit their best dissertation, but um, self-nomination is possible, so if you have a really excellent dissertation, feel free to, um, to send it to the generic DSA um, address, and it can be considered uh, when we review them, usually in the spring, of, uh, spring before the conference. So um, this year's winner from... Uh, who wrote on spatial aspects of development in Dubai from Sheffield, I think from memory, is hopefully going to be at the conference. So you'll have a chance possibly to hear a bit more about it, but certainly to download the dissertation from the website. Um, we also, as Gareth was outlining, act as a sort of portal for different student events. So the student Facebook group is a really good way to communicate anything that you're doing and to learn about what others are doing. Uh, we also support and engage with um, different events such as the, uh, the UEL undergraduate conference. Uh, there's also a regular PhD conference that's run um, collectively by ISS, IDS, um, Bochum and, and UEA. <laughs> yes, that's the other institution. Uh, it would have happened this year in September, but has unfortunately been cancelled during due to COVID-19. But it will be um, it will be resuming from the following year and we'll be trying to link it in with the DSA conference to save you money if you'd like to attend both of them. So um, as Bookie, Bookie was explaining, we 
we're really very open and we're, we're very keen for students to sort of push forward their own ideas. Uh, so if you've got, um, if there's something that you as a student feel you know, needs to be better dealt with, a need that you have that is not currently being met, whether it's, for example, for career advice or mentoring around writing, then please, please feel free to get in touch. We also work quite closely with our European counterpart, IADI, which has its own dedicated wing work, working with young researchers. So that, um, that means that we can, for example, um, make you aware of things like the JUMP um, Academic Writing Training Programme and a proposed um, PhD um, thesis prize. They also have currently a blog prize ongoing for student, uh, student writers. So it's worth going to their website as well and having a look. Um, as with DSA, student membership is extremely reasonable, so it's really worth doing. In fact, I think at the moment it might be free, which you can't get more reasonable than that. Um, so I think I should probably leave the podium to en enable others to come up and ask a few questions, make some suggestions, but um, please do get in touch with Amal, with Bookie, with myself, Laura Camfield, or to the generic DSA um, DSA email list. Bookie Thank you very much, Laura. Like me. <laughs> I will just... <laughs> okay. So please, if anyone has any questions for Laura, um, this is the time to do so. So she's in charge of student engagement. Um, she's talked about our early career research fund, which um, gives up to 7,000 in funding for kind of student-led events. And um, we encourage um, co-funding with your institution. So if you have, if there's something your institution is organizing or you want to do with your, your institution and you need parts of the money while your institution brings the other parts, um, this would be a good fund. So it could be for basically anything that can kind of um, benefit your research and other students in the network. Um, she has also talked about the dissertation prize for master's students. And um, she's introduced our Facebook group and other events that we do in partnership with um, other universities. All of this will be summarized in an email and sent to all students after the conference. But if you have any specific questions um, regarding what she's just said, then please do send them in. Sorry, I'm just looking at the chats as well. Yeah, so we have some new people who have come in. So please, what we're doing now, we're just um, getting people's um, ideas about how we can engage more as um, student members and um, gathering ideas about how DSA can support your, your research a bit better. And Laura has just told us about some of the things DSA does um, to support the student members, but we're always very open for more um, ideas, innovation that can um, help us support students better. So while we're waiting for more raised hands, I'm just going to introduce um, something that we've started doing um, called institutional representatives. So basically, because we have quite a number of institutions that we work with, we have, um, we've decided to kind of involve other DSC student members to support um, this, DSA student reps, which is Amal and I, in basically engaging with students. So far, um, we've gotten 12 people who have indicated interest from about 10 universities. Um, we have representation from University of East Anglia, University of Reading, University of Greenwich, University College London, two from the University of Bath, two from University of Birmingham, University of York, two from University of Edinburgh, and one from the University of Cardiff. So basically, what we, um, we need institutional representatives to do for us is, on an institutional level, help us gather kind of ideas, information um, that we as reps can then translate to the council. So Amal and I also sit on the DSA council, and then we have regular meetings where we are asked to tell them about what students want. So we um, engage institutional representatives to help us gather this information, and then we can then relate to the council and see how we can better engage with students and make sure that we, our voices are heard and make sure that um, we're actually all really benefiting from the DSA. So we've sent out a couple of emails and um, we initially had five and just in the past two days, We've had an extra, an additional seven people who have indicated interest. 
So please, if if any of you feel like it's something you want to do, just email um, Amal and I, and then I'll send you a brief about what the rule entails. It's not too cumbersome and shouldn't take too much of your time. So um, any other questions, please, suggestions? Okay, we have a question from Barbara from University of Reading. She's asking, is it possible to continue networking throughout the year, maybe monthly or even quarterly by presenting our papers and mentoring each other in the process? So virtual meetings can do. And um, how many student members are we in total? Okay, that's a very nice idea, Barbara, especially now that I think everything is um, going online. I think we can host Zoom meetings and things like that. But what do we think about it? Um, to network, to have just, Gareth mentioned something like this as well. Just um, just something like this, maybe Zoom. I don't know if we can use Shindig. Just network, um, maybe monthly or quarterly, quarterly, like Barbara suggested. Then also pre presenting our papers to each other. So if kind of pair, pair review, <laughs> pair review. So student to student kind of review and mentoring each other in the process. And I think um, if we have things like this, then like... Um, Chika was asking from Nigeria, you might be able to find people who are doing the same kind of research or who have the same kind of research interest with you. So um, thank you very much, Barbara. I'm going to put that down. And um, I think we have like, we have a voting function here. So maybe towards the end, we can just do a vote to see how many people are really interested in networking, in meeting more frequently. And then we can find a suitable platform to meet virtually. I think that would be a good idea. So I'll just put that down. Thank you, Barbara. We have another question from, okay, Gareth. Gareth said, how are the DSC Council looking to decolonize UK development studies following last year's conference keynote on racism in development studies and in light of current Black Lives Matters protest? Okay, that's very deep. Um, um, so if anyone has anything to say about these two questions, that would be great, but, um, we're having a, a council meeting on Friday, and all of these questions actually we put together in our in part of the brief will be given the council. So be rest assured that your questions will be taken to the council. If anyone has any contributions to the questions that have been asked, if you have new questions, if you have suggestions, that's fine. So I was wondering, um, the ECR funding, um, we um Institutional members, or sorry, student members in the Global South, can they benefit from this? So students who are in say, Nigeria and other parts of the world, is it just uh, yes. is it just for UK? No, absolutely not. Um, I was, <laughs> I thought I was audible, and I was just explaining that at the moment we're considering an application from a Kenyan student to do academic writing training um, in conjunction with the British Institute for East Africa. So um, please do apply. The only um, criterion is that you've been a member for a year. Um, I, I also wanted to briefly respond to um, Gareth's question around decolonisation. Uh, we are we are moving a little bit slowly on this, I will admit, um, but we did have a meeting with heads of centres uh, earlier this year, looking at what people felt the needs were in terms of, for example, resources to um, critically review curriculums and to strengthen their content. Um, we got the feeling that there, we got the impression from that and from a survey that there's a great deal of unmet need out there, and that's probably where we'll be predominantly working. Um, working to support, so to support our members in um, thinking critically about diversity issues and also broadening their curriculum. I think there's probably more that we can do. There's a short statement about um, decolonising development in general on our website, uh, but at, um, at the moment it's yeah, it's perhaps moving a bit slower than we'd like because there are a number of um, other priorities and, of course, continually emerging priorities such as COVID-19 and the um, recent announcement of the DFID FCO merger. So if that's something that people in this room feel particularly strongly about or they feel that like they'd like to make a, a contribution, critical or otherwise, then that would be much appreciated. And the, use, and the contact um, details that we gave earlier would apply in relation to that. Yeah, so we're talking about networking. I'm, I'm quite sure Barbara and Gareth are already interested. So who else is interested in us having networking or like seminars or meetings um, after now? And what should be the focus of this kind of meetings? I was uh, uh, I was saying in relation to the uh, uh, to what Barbara uh, uh, proposed. 
a networking uh, uh, meeting uh, to be uh, organized regularly. Um, this comes uh, uh, to why we wanted, uh, we were proposing an institutional delegate uh, so that we can really be uh, 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 distribute the task. Like if she's, if Barbara is, uh, would like to organize that, that would be at least, I mean, more than welcome. This is one way to uh, involve others and to, uh, you know, to just uh, uh, continue uh, networking. So uh, please, if you can, if you have any suggestions, that would be great because Buki and I cannot really do everything. We are on the council and uh, we can, if, if we need to promote some of your ideas to the council, we can do that. And we can also do sometimes some networking uh, uh, events, but uh, it's better if every one of us uh, uh, manage to do a little bit so we can all together do a lot for our community. Okay. Okay, thanks, Amal. Um, we have one raised hand, so I'll just bring Gareth up. Thanks, Amal, and uh, thanks, Bucky. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thanks. It was just a, a little comment on, on that. I think it's brilliant that you've got the institutional reps in place. That's a really fantastic initiative. Uh, I think one of the main things is rather than just who's got an idea and I think, well, I think one of the really useful things is the fact that there's so much already going on. So everyone's institution will be doing stuff that's aimed at their own uh, doctoral researchers, possibly across faculties, across departments and things like that. I know in the past we've had, um, we've been able to put out calls for uh, people to be able to go attend obviously uh, the the phd training in in university of east anglia but also when robert chambers has run open sessions on participatory participatory um planning and things like that um yeah uh we'd be able to open it up for other students to go so what i would encourage to all those institutional reps is to have a think about what maybe your department's doing or if you hear of any other net things going on that, within your networks and uh, and check if it's okay to maybe invite others and most people are usually open and particularly at the, in this current time when it's so much of it's online even more so um and you know and you can just send a, a zoom link or a, uh, a, a this sort of thing um but i think r rather than everyone trying to think oh i need to try and organize think about how to do something it's more that there's so much going on let's get or uh, rather than duplicating as well the idea is that different institutions can maybe come together uh, and and do, and do stuff that that was just my input okay that's very interesting thank you gareth yeah so yeah i think i think what gareth has said is very um very important i mean many of our institutions already do a range of activities and seminars and conferences and especially now most of them are open and free so as much as possible and um would email the institutional representatives after now to tell them that Whenever your department, your faculty, your school is doing anything that you think other student members can benefit from, please do let us know. If you send an email to Amal and I, we can, we can broadcast it. And it does not have to just be institutional representatives. I mean, every student member is really welcome to kind of contribute. Whenever it is that anything is happening, please do let us know and we can help spread the word. But aside that, um, if we still want to have our own bespoke kind of dedicated monthly, quarterly kind of networking, um, that would be great. I mean, um, okay, Nicola Heathen from University of Birmingham has said it's a good idea. So I guess that's the engagement. She said, I'll particularly welcome a session on fieldwork slash COVID and how does if interviews online, move online, how we ensure that some voices are not privileged over those without internet access. I think that's very, that's a very important one. So now that more people might have to move their kind of research, um, field work, data collection online. So how do we ensure that there isn't that gap between those or like you're not selecting just those who have access to internet and kind of leaving out those who do not. So I think um, it's, it's what you're still looking into. Amal and I will send out an email after um, the conference just on like trying to get everyone's interest to know if there's something we want to do. And as Amal has said, it doesn't have to be us who do the organization. I mean, if Barbara, for instance, decides that she wants to organize 
just um, a, a meeting or she wants to present a paper and would like us to just help her organize that, help her invite people, we'll be more than happy to do that. But as much as possible, people should feel free to come up with their own, to um, kind of champion some of this kind of um, events. So um, do we have any other questions, any other ideas? We have about 10 more minutes to go. Hi. Yeah, I would like to. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, I would like to contribute a little thing on Barbara's uh, suggestion. Especially, I think it would be much helpful if uh, a, there can be some kind of a joint venture, like for example, a joint application into uh, the, the career development, the one the seven thousand career development fund. For example, it, it I think it might not it might be also helpful to think about uh, applying a joint joint venture joint joint application, and that would mean coming together discussing about it how best it can be, uh, rather than applying it maybe only for one university. I don't know how it is structured, but I was thinking that maybe if we, there's some room for that, that would be helpful and it would bring the the, the the students together in one way or the other. So I think that that to me would be an interesting thing, thing, thing that we could venture into. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, so you're trying to say, um, instead of just one person doing it from the university, if a couple of students from different universities can do a joint application for the ERs, ECR fund to organize something. Okay, yes, so like university yes. collaboration, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. That would be great. I mean, I don't, I don't think that anything's stopping that, but I'm just going to clarify from Laura. So... She can just tell us if that is possible. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just set you up. So, um, <laughs> Sam Zuka from the University of Edinburgh was asking mm -hmm. if it's possible for um, to have a joint kind of application. So, not just one person for from one university, uh, maybe a couple of people from different universities coming together to apply yes, for. I should the have, I should have clarified that. That would be very much encouraged because you're working across different institutions. I think when we initially started it, and we thought there would be a bit more interest than there's proved to be, we were a bit concerned that universities might think, "Oh, well, we can just run this event we were going to run anyway, um, but we'll use this funding to do it." Um, so we then really emphasised the importance of people across different institutions benefiting. So that would be a real strength because obviously part of the networking is the very act of creating the networking event. I mean, that's where the sort of real connections and learning happens. So, yeah, we've been able to clarify that. So if um, two or three people across different universities want to come together to apply for one fund, that's absolutely fine. In fact, it's even more, it's very much welcome. So um, you don't just have to apply for it for your institution alone or just an individual from one institution. So someone from University of Reading, Edinburgh, Manchester can all come together organize a joint event and bring your um, application forward? No, no, I think we've covered uh, uh, um, many, I mean, most of the uh, 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 issues, if not all. And uh, the main message is um, that uh, for uh, students to uh, come up with other, I mean, for the colleagues to come up with ideas of how we can support and whether we can uh, support, as you said, if if they wanted to go through, uh, 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 have uh, networking events, we can help organize this. Or if uh, also they have ideas about uh, funds, uh, we can also propose it to the council. So um, uh, the main uh, um, objective of having uh, uh, somebody, uh, um, one institutional representative or a rep institutional delegate is how we called it, is just to uh, be able to connect with uh, a, a wider number of, of students so that we can, we can uh, handle the feedback, whether we can do things at, uh, directly or relay to uh, to the council. So um, it's a good opportunity, and uh, for uh, today, I mean, I'm I'm happy that we have uh, about uh, twenty people here, so that's a good start. 
And as uh, also, also Gareth said, we can organize uh, virtual meetings, which is going to be our lives, I think, for some time. So that would be convenient. And today, also, it was very uh, helpful to have this uh, the conference going online so we could see as many participants from different parts of the world. So that's also uh, important. There's a question. Yeah, uh, there's a question for, uh, well, sorry, I can't see your name because it's saying undefined, but it's for Laura. And, and the person is asking if DSA offers any funding opportunities to international, to international students to support their studies. I don't think so. But I'm going to allow Laura to answer that, even though I don't think so. So I'm just going to, thank you, Amal. I'm just going to take you down. No, I'm afraid Bookie's right. The, the answer is no. I think that would be very popular, but um, we're a membership organisation and our resources are a little bit limited. Um, what we could do if people would find it helpful is um, try to be a bit more systematic in our collating of scholarship opportunities. Certainly when we see them, um, we tend to post them to the student Facebook and also to our bulletin and put them on the website. So it is certainly worth keeping an eye out for those. Um, but we don't at the moment, we don't systematically try and harvest them at a particular point in the year. Okay, um, thank you very much, Laura. So we just have two more minutes to round up. So I'll just give a, a, a recap and just some of the important points I think we should um, take from here. So, um, yeah, so we have, there's some things DSA can do for you. There's the ERC funding. We have a Facebook page, so please follow us. I'm going to put the link on um, the email I'm going to be sending around. And um, we still have the reading group. So if you check the websites, you might find a reading group that does something kind of related to your research, just in case you're looking for um, partner collaboration opportunities. Um, we have talked about um, the idea of organizing kind of online virtual events like this, where we can have like peer-to-peer -peer, um, mentorship. So we can listen to people talk about their papers and things like that, but also, we have been reminded of the importance of using what we already have, the facilities that already existing. So if your department, your school, your institution is doing any seminar or any program that is free, do let us know so that we can share with other GSC student members who might be interested and they can join. Um, so uh, what else did we talk about? And we talked about the institutional reps and we're still looking for more um, representation across universities. So please, if you're interested, we can have more than one in university. So it doesn't have to be just one person. So if you're interested, you can co-represent your university with some other person. Yeah, so all of this will be sent around um, in an email, just summarizing everything we've discussed to everyone. But please, if you have any questions, um, Amal and I are here to answer your questions. If you um, need access to maybe some of the, um, maybe links to like maybe um, funding opportunities that we have, like the ECR, you let us know, we can send it to you. Um, so we're here basically to take your needs to the council. We have our council meeting on Friday and all of these things will be discussed there. So please feel free at any time to email us and we would be there to respond. So um, our time is up now. I want to thank everyone who attended today. Um, so we'll still be engaging. Um, Barbara, your point has been taken on and everyone who is interested, we've already taken note of you. Um, we'll talk more. So please, Barbara, if, you're inter if this is something you want to champion, please send us an email and then we'll find, we'll, we will facilitate you know, the process. So just let us know and we can do that, but yeah. So um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll let us all go so we can prepare for our next sessions.